Hey there, welcome back. So today we're going to be making these slime tiles here, or at least starting to. Um, today we're just implementing the functionality of having them spawn where we want them to, and then if we make a match near them, they go away. Next time we will be adding in the functionality to make them expand and take over the board, but let's get started. So, uh, where we left off, we have our uh, board here with three different kinds of obstacles. We have tiles that are similar to the jelly tiles that you can still swipe under, but if you make a match underneath them, they get destroyed. Tiles similar to the licorice tiles, uh, where you cannot swipe underneath them, either into or out of. But again, if you make a match underneath them, they get destroyed. We have tiles similar to the icing tiles, where if you make a match in one of the cardinal directions near it, uh, that'll cause it to be destroyed. So today we're going to be looking at starting to make the last of the four obstacle tiles we're going to make. Um, there are tiles in Candy Crush that are chocolate tiles that you start um, encountering a little bit later on. Uh, what the chocolate tiles do, they function for the most part just like the icing tiles, except if you don't destroy one of the chocolate tiles during that round, um, it'll turn one of the normal tiles that is adjacent to a chocolate tile into a chocolate tile. So they kind of have a tendency to spread, and they the whole point of them is to uh, change your priorities as to what you're doing on the board to you know make sure that you get rid of those first, which can you know cause some interesting situations. So that's what we're going to be making today. Uh, however, there's more to these than there have been to the other tiles that we've been making. So uh, this is going to be a two-part thing. We're going to cover part one, the setup today, and then tomorrow, or not tomorrow, the next video that we do, which will probably be in two days, we're going to cover how to um, actually put in the things that make the chocolate tiles unique. So uh, let's dive right in and get started. Uh, if we take a look here, the very first thing I want to do is I want to make a new inherited scene, and this is going to be inherited from concrete because we're going to use the exact same um, logic that we have in the concrete tile where it just needs, you know, a health variable. I'm going to rename this to call it slime. Instead of chocolate, I'm just going to call these slime tiles. I'm going to go to the sprite, and I'm going to switch that out for slime.png, which can be found in the assets for this project, which you can find at the itch.io link in the description. Um, and I'll just save this as a new scene. All right, cool. So this video, like I said, is going to be pretty much recreating everything that was done with the concrete tiles, only this time with slime. And then we'll add the extra stuff in the next video. So first thing I'm going to do is in my game window here, I'm going to add a new node 2D. This needs to go above where the grid is. I'm going to call this uh, slime folder. I'm going to add a new script to this, and I will put this in the scripts folder. I'm going to call it slime folder uh, and create. And then I'm going to go into my grid here, and I'm going to create some variables. First, I'm going to create a vector2 array. So export pool vector to array. I'm going to call this var slime spaces. And then I'm going to make some signals for the slime. So signal make slime signal damage slime. And then let's make a spawn method. Actually, slime is one of those restricted fill. So let's add it to the restricted fill function. This is in array, slime spaces, place, return true. Um, yep, and then we want to, I'm just going to take this spawn concrete function, copy that, and I'll paste it down here. It changes from concrete to slime. So slime, and then this is going to be slime spaces. 
yeah, and then uh, make slime. And slime spaces. Okay, and now I need to call this method from ready. So after spawn concrete, spawn slime. All right, so for the most part, we've got a lot of the stuff that we need. Um, as far as the concrete tiles go, when we destroy matched, we check to see if we need to damage any of the special, which means that we're going to need to do something for the uh, slime tiles as well. And what we'll do for the slime tiles is the same thing that we just did for the concrete. So the method that we use for that is check concrete. So I'm going to copy that and I'll call it check slime. So instead of check concrete, it's check slime. And then the signal that we're going to emit isn't damage concrete, but damage slime. Oops, there we go. And if you double click over something, you'll highlight that entire variable name. So I'll just copy that and I'll paste it over damage concrete. Um, all right, cool. And then I'll add that to my damage special. So check slime, column row. Okay, so the last thing that we need is this um, remove for the slime, but we'll deal with that in just a second. Let's jump over to our slime holder and we're gonna copy pretty much all of the concrete logic here. So I'm just gonna copy my concrete holder back to my slime holder and I'll just paste that in and let's change what we need to. So instead of being concrete pieces, this is gonna be slime pieces. I'm gonna copy this variable name because I'm gonna to need to put it in a whole bunch of different places. This is gonna be on grid make slime. This is gonna be slime pieces, slime pieces. This is gonna be slime instead of concrete. I'll go back and fix that in a second. Slime pieces. On grid damage slime. Helped if I can spell it correctly. Slime pieces, slime pieces, slime pieces, slime pieces, slime pieces. And then the um, signal we're going to emit is going to be remove slime. Now we need to change our signal from remove concrete to remove slime. And the name of our slime scene to slime. And let's not call it concrete, let's call it slime. And what else? Yep, okay, cool. So now we need to hook up all of our signals and stuff. So if we jump back here, let's take a look at our grid. And we're gonna hook damage slime to the slime holder. And we're gonna hook make slime to the slime holder. And then from the slime, we're gonna hook remove slime up to the grid. And that one is gonna make a new method, but we can just pass in or replace the body of the method with the same thing that we're doing for the concrete tiles, except instead of being in concrete spaces, it's going to be in slime spaces. And again, I'm going to copy that variable name and paste and paste. Okay. Oh, no, did not mean to do that. I get so used to uh, Visual Studio when I'm switching back and forth, it takes me a minute or two to change my, uh, my hotkey methods. Um, I think that's everything. Let's test it out here and let's find out what I broke. Okay, cool. Oh, so I didn't pass in the place here. So in my grid, this needs to know the place. So that's one thing I did wrong. Okay, and oh, yeah, I don't have 
don't have anything in my my array. So let's do that really, really fast here. I'm going to go to my <laughs> grid and my slime spaces, vector2 array. I'm going to make this an array of four. My indices, um, let's do 0, 4. No, OK, uh, 0, 4. And let's do 0, 5. And let's do 7, 4. And let's do 7, 5. All right, cool. So let's try this now. OK, cool. So there are my slime pieces. Uh, if I make a match near them, they get destroyed just like the concrete, and they get refilled just like the concrete. So, cool. Now, next time, we need to add the actual stuff that makes these different, instead of just having a different uh, color to go with it. So we will do that next time. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the description down below. Or comments down below, sorry. Uh, you can find links for all the art assets in the description. Um, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can uh, join my Discord, where I'm chatting more recently, but it's kind of on and off because of the school year. But uh, anyway, yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day.